Yeah, welcome back. And uh, we're now being joined by Libra Sashama again to discuss a very key issue occurred over the weekend. What's the talk on social media? Police invasion of clubs. We'll be discussing if it's a grandstanding or a commendable action. So in the early hours of Saturday around 1 a.m. Uh, over the weekend, the police you know, raided some clubs in Surulere, Lagos and arrested uh, over 70 club goers. Now, they say they were arrested for violating COVID-19 protocols, social distancing, and, you know, the clubs have been suspended to check the spread of the virus. Uh, they also uh, arrested residents and motorists for violating the 12 a.m. curfew, not just in Surulere, but also in the island. And Lagos, as we know, is the epicenter of the virus, accounting for over a third of the infections in Nigeria. Uh, let's now uh, bring Libra Sashama in to discuss this. Uh, now, COVID-19 or not, Nigerian police, you know, they've been notorious over the years for basically raiding clubs, you know, under the guise of, uh, you know, arresting prostitutes or sex workers, so to speak, and internet fraud stars. So would you say COVID-19 is just an excuse this time or would you commend them for, you know, carrying out their duties? You, you know, all of us are, we are a country of um, very lawless people. Um, let's not hide under the fact that, yes, police are notorious. They are lawless. The rest of us also are lawless. You know, when, when government, the government says, the state government, and not even federal government, says, look, um, there are protocols to be observed because the numbers are increasing. Whether you doubt the numbers or not is a rule that has been laid down by government. Obey and observe. Club owners, you, you see, in, in um, River State, even though we condemned Wiki, he went as far as demolishing a hotel, even though they will pay compensation later. But that your business have been sacrificed just to prove a point. So why would you want to, you know, go to that extent to sacrifice a business because you want to, you know? So sometimes... When we understand that we live in a lawless society, we should try as much as we can not to be caught off guard. For one, I don't like begging policemen. I would want to be on my rights so that when I insist, I know what I'm insisting on. But when you are caught off guard, you know, you are their mercy. So that's the problem here. They say, do not open. When you open, Ensure that the numbers does not extend or is not beyond this number yes. so that there will be proper spacing. Comply. If for nothing at all, it's a rule laid down by government. They say don't move at so between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. You know, I presume maybe COVID is out at that time, you know, on a lighter note. <laughs> but for whatever reason, for whatever reason, comply. Ensure that, except you are, you know, it's an extreme case, not to go and drink beer or go clubbing. The, the you, you know, and then for the business owners, they are not saying shut down completely, but, you know, ensure that you observe the protocols. Because, let's assume that we are lucky that it is not as deadly in this part of the world, the way, you know, it was um, observed in, you know, Europe and America. In Canada, it is almost an offense for you to go out without a face mask. You know, it is that bad. So, yes, our police can be overzealous. They would want to, they will, they will first and foremost be, they'll break the law. In enforcing the law, they break the law. You can imagine the number of policemen that would go to those places all of them will go without face masks. They will cramp into those same vehicles, you know, all in, in, in uh, one helos. You have about maybe 10 people in one um, uh, patrol van, you know, going to arrest people. Exactly, who really. What, what then is the rationale for saying that they're breaking COVID-19 protocols, but you're breaking it, you're sandwiching Two them into vehicles. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know, really. Two wrongs don't make a right. The policemen are meant to obey rules. Uh, are meant to enforce rules. And so if you break the law, you don't say because a policeman... Imagine a policeman driving one way will arrest you for driving one way. Yeah. A policeman riding Okada will arrest an Okada man 
you know so we know but the 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 what i'm saying here is that do not be caught of god last man would drive one way to arrest somebody driving one way it's it's a norm here but if we all that's why for me it's an attitudinal thing allow don't be caught off guard so when you see a, a policeman driving one way or cramped we've seen pictures of people taking pictures of policemen cramped in a patrol vehicle you know so when you do this at least you are calling the government to order you're calling the uh, uh, hierarchy of the police to order you're calling you know uh, the state government to order to ensure that you know even in some of these places these rules are observed so so what what exactly is the um would you say is the aim here um because now the reports say you know about 243 people were arrested um over the weekend numerous you know lounges mostly here in uh, victor island and then of course you know they get bail they go home um back to work on monday no, so so in, in what ways you know does the government then pass the message yeah, um, first and foremost um, you know our attitude of passing message here is to create fear so what governments wants to do is first create fear in the mind of business owners if the businesses are not open nobody will go there so when you know that um, they've come to seal your place or the police came to raid those places and the next day you won't open or if um, a fine is imposed on you for you know violating the protocols you will not open so we our method of enforcing laws here is to create fear when you create fear some people will be arrested and then you know typical police will always make money from it so for me that's why i advise business owners and citizens don't be in a position where you become a sacred cow a sacri um, sorry a sacrificial Fisher lamb, lamb. You become a sacrificial lamb that you're used to show example to others and then also the police should ensure that in enforcing laws they also should comply with the guidelines and protocols you know every of us you, you see in, in some cases you find out that um, some persons will say um, uh, because we are even when you distribute palliatives to people to the poor and vulnerable you find out that in some most of those cases we are not observing you know the guidelines and protocols you know so some supermarkets they tell you you must wear face masks but it is just to cross you know the cross the door once you cross the door you remove it you know so that's for me are areas we also need to look at even those of us here too these are areas we need to look at that's why government should government's attitude I, I always speak about this attitude government attitude is not encouraging government attitude paint a picture of the fact that look this thing is just a mirage it's just a facade you know it is not here even though you hear that some people are dying alibaba also gave you know a testimony his own personal uh, experience, experience. Yes. you know so you see this as one off and the only time you hear of this is you know, when the likes of Alibaba ministers and, you know, talk about it. You don't hear, you don't see the ordinary man, the, you know, the, face similar, um, you know, uh, health crisis. So the picture is that, like I've listened to some people on the street, they'll say, ah, now Ghana big man sickness, not before poor man, because even the condition under which they live, there is no way a man who, who lives in a face, may I face you, you know, uh, compound for example you have about um, 11 rooms this way 11 rooms that way and in in that house alone you have an average i'm not exaggerating have average of 150 people in that one one house you know and then they all use maybe they have just two kitchen and use one toilet so in such areas the government governments you know in actions had you know have um, conditioned people to such environment and then government now comes and is telling you social distancing you must observe social distancing i, I, I want us to um, you get quickly. to the airport they say you maintain social distancing and then but you're all cramping in, in, the, in plane. the same plane there is no distance between you know so when you put all of this in the mix the picture you get is that look 
this thing is not um, what they are telling. It's more to it than what they are telling us. I, 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 want, but, I want us to. I want you to quickly speak on the necessity of these persons being arrested, um, because you know, like you also said, you know, one of your statements, the police will always make money out of uh, things yeah. like this. But you know, doesn't it, 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 it doesn't it take us back to some of the things that Nigerians have always complained about? Because two hundred people are arrested. They are all made to sit on the floor. They are dehumanized for you know that many hours. Their photos are taken and posted on social media. Um, even without them being charged with anything in particular. They can't charge them because um, um, it's a regulation. It's um, an executive order, and um, an executive order cannot take the force so, of so why, why? So isn't so it the better worst, to just the worst they kick they them out of done. the club? And yes, and shut the, the club. worst they could have done would have been ensure that um, when you get there, you ensure that the protocols are observed, and then um, if the numbers is you know, above, you, you, you can seal the place. Uh, for the time being, and you know, but dehumanizing the people, making them to sit on the floor, you know, for me is not part of the functions or the duties of the policemen that are sent to go and ensure that there's compliance. It's like coming into a church and you find out that um, you know the protocols are not observed. Do you you know ask the people to sit on the floor? Do you dehumanize the pastor? Or the so basically the rules the should case. not be different. They shouldn't be different, but because it's a clubhouse and, you know, the presumption is that they are young people, you know, you want to maltreat them, dehumanize them. It shouldn't be. So you won't apply such rule when you go to a church or a mosque and you see people flaunting the protocols. You will not. You will talk to them politely. You will tell them, look, you, you, must, you must close this uh, prayer meeting or, you know, whatever you're doing now and ensure that, you know, even... Government gave directive uh, on um, New Year's Eve that um, what what's it called now? Your the crossover services. Yes. Um, I wonder where that name came from. As if the day before you didn't cross over <laughs> from one night to the other. <laughs> you know, should not hold. Rather, a lot of people should attend service online and, and you, you know. So even if if you now meet or or you go to churches that flown those. Um, regulations. Would you ask all of them to sit on Indeed. the floor and dehumanize them? Lastly, uh, you, you, know, Shoma, um, you mentioned how the government, you know, would use fear to get people to comply and yeah. to obey rules. How would you advise the government to best proceed? Lastly, there should be, you know, when this um, campaign started, government engaged more. You, you saw the commissioner for health. You know, was almost on every platform. You know, talking to people. Government created structures, and then um, you know it was more believable. And but then they, they went to sleep. They miss it during that lockdown process, the sharing of the palliative, and then you know the testing, um, even the scam scandal of testing. Recently, we also learned that some people, you know, you come in and then you test. Pay for. Um, there are some people that didn't even conduct the test, but they had results. Also, you find situations where. You know, people also, um, um, uh, what do you call it now? Some people, you know, came in and then they left without actually, you know, going Getting through tested. the test. We talked about it last week. Yep. And yet, you know, government just released names and nothing is done. So with all of this in the mix, it means it shows that there is a lacuna. There's a big lacuna, you know. So when you have all of this lacuna, the tendency for people not to believe you will be there. So what you should do, you engage more, communicate more, you know, get volunteers, people who will volunteer to assist, even in testing, in passing this information. It is not only when rich men, you know, contract Contracted. COVID that you talk about it. The ordinary man on the street also, people who, the everyday people, you should also talk about all of those ones. So that, these are messages, these are people who are closer to the so grassroots. Yeah. The message will get down as Pasture. much as you want. Yes. And then create a buffer for people who will not be able to go to work, or those that you have asked not to work. Create a buffer for them. Be genuinely interested in their welfare. When you don't do that, they will tell you hunger is worse than COVID. And truly, hunger is worse than COVID. So while you can recover from COVID, you, in some cases, you can't recover from hunger. Mm. So government should be more sensitive communicate more, not just share WhatsApp messages and then think that. How many people do you think would read those such messages? You know, we are more interested in controversies than uh, 
uh, some of this information. Yes. All right. So we, when you we, communicate we, more and you're genuinely interested, yeah. you would um, you pass the message without having to use force or compare people. There's a, a lot of details, you know, to this conversation. You know that we unfortunately don't have the time to talk about the hunger is. Uh, uh, more of a problem than COVID, you know, aspect, the fact where, you know, the Nigerian police themselves need to do better um, and treat, you know, Nigerians, you know, better generally. Yeah. And yeah. of course, the part where Nigerians themselves just find it very, very difficult obeying laws. Um, we're still in 2021, you know, you will still be parked at a traffic light and you see five cars drive past you like you don't have a, a brain. So there's a lot of, you know, details to this conversation. But what's most important is for everyone to realize the danger uh, that uh, COVID-19 is in our um, community, in our society today, and uh, find ways to adhere to these protocols um, um, as we go on. But thanks anyway to... Uh, Thank you very much. Dr. Shoma. Always my pleasure. For your time, and thanks for speaking with us this morning. Stay with us. Uh, we're taking a short break. When we come back, we're talking um, insurgency and the president's vow to end insurgency in 2021. Like I asked earlier, how different is this from the statements he made in 2015, 2016, 2017? Every new year, And every fact. year. Um, and, you know, what we, we maybe, you know, are we going to be asking the president at the end of 2021 if this doesn't happen? So stay with us. We'll be back.